Good day, everyone. Uh, by popular demand, I'm going to record this little lecture about uh, graphs, adjacent matrices, and works on graphs. Uh, basically, what I want to explain is that uh, if we have a graph with adjacent matrix A, and then if we take the nth power of the adjacent matrix, and then we look at the element in the i-th row and j-th column, then this is going to be the number of walks of length n. n is the same as the power from vertex i to vertex j. Now, I'm just going to explain this to um, tell you what it means, but I'm, I'm not going to prove it. So if you want to prove it, then either try to do it yourselves, which is doable. Uh, it's not really that tricky. You just need to do it by mathematical induction, or you can read the proof um, online. Just Google it. Anyway, the first uh, let's review the concept the, the concept of adjacent symmetric. Uh, so what is adjacent symmetric? Um, adjacent symmetric is the matrix whose um, entries are zeros and ones. And uh, if the vertex i is connected to vertex j by an edge, like for example here, 2 is connected by an edge to, to 5. Then the element in row i, column j, in this case, second row, fifth column, is going to be 1. Or, of course, um, vice versa, you know, in fifth row, second column, also 1. And so on the other hand, if two vertices, say 3 and 1, are not connected by an edge, then there's going to be 0 in the first row, third column, or, sorry, uh, um, third row, first column. Okay, so now the matrix A square counts walks of length 2. So what does it mean? Um, let's look at some vertices, say, 6 and 1. Then, um, there, are there is precisely one walk of length uh, 2 from 6 to 1. So we have to go to 7 and then to 1. So then, um, the element in the 6th row, 1st column um, of A square is going to be 1. Now let me uh, explain maybe some other number here, uh, let's say from 2 to 6. Right? So if we take 2 and 6, how many walks of length 2 are there from 2 to 6? So we can go to 5 and to 6, that's 1. Or we can go from 2 to 3 and then to 6, that's 2. Or from 4 and to 6, that, that is 3. Is there anything else? Well, what else could we do? We could go from 2 to, to 1, but from 1 there is no edge to, to 6, so this is not working. So which is why there are exactly 3 walks of length 2, uh, from 2 to 6, and the corresponding end entry of the uh, matrix A square is 3. All right. Let me explain, let's say, um, walks of length 2 from vertex 2 to vertex 2. So suppose that we are at vertex 2 and we want to uh, count walks of length 2 from 
vertex 2 back to 2. So how many of them? So we can go to 1, but then if we want to reach vertex 2 in precisely 2 steps, then we have to go back. So 1 step, 2 steps. That's 1. Or we can go to 5, first step, back to 2, second step. Or we can go to 3, first step, second step. Or we can go to 4, first step, uh, second step. This is how we can explain this number 4. So there are 4 walks of length 2 from vertex 2 back to itself. But then, of course, generally speaking, it is clear that uh, if you want to, to make a walk of length 2 from a vertex back to itself, then you have to go to a neighbor vertex and then go back to itself which means that the number of walks from each vertex to itself of length 2 is exactly the number of vertices that are connected to it by an edge or the degree of the vertex. Right? So here the degree of vertex 1 is 2. There are two edges adjacent to it or two vertices, two, two vertices connected to it. Two. The degree of vertex 2 is 4. The degree of vertex 3 is 2. Degree vertex 4 is again 2, so there are two edges adjacent to it. 5, 2, 6, 4, 7, 2. And that's how we get 2, 4, 2 here. All right, um, I hope it is clear. Uh, now let's um, explain entries of a cube. Right, so a cube counts walks of length 3. So, for example, if we want to look at walks of length 3 from, say, um, vertex 1 to vertex 3, how many of them are there? Well, from vertex 1, in order to reach vertex 3, we can go to 7. And then there is uh, no choice. We have to go to, to 6. And then again, there is no choice. We have to go to 3. That's one. Is there another one? So if we don't go to 7, then we have to go to 2. Well, but then if we go to 2 straight to 3, that's going to be a walk of length 2. So it doesn't count. right? So we have to either to go to 5, but then from 5 we have to go to 3, but there is no edge. So 5 doesn't work. Or we can go from 2 to 4, but then again there is no edge from uh, 4 to 3, so it doesn't work. So which means there is only one walk of length 3 from 1 to 3, and which is why we observe 1 here. Okay, so how, how about we explain number 3 here. So walks of length 3 from vertex 1 to vertex 7. Okay. So vertex 1 to vertex 7. How many walks of length 3 are there? All right, let's try. Um, well, if we want to go from 1 to 7 in 3 steps, the first step that we can take is straight to 7. But then, after doing this, since we are counting walks of length, Three, we have to take two more steps. Then, how many ways are there to reach seven from seven in exactly two steps? And of course, we can continue through six and back. That's one. Or we can go back to one and then again to seven. Right? So, if we begin, if we start from one, go to seven immediately, and want to reach seven after a walk of length 3, then there's going to be two ways to do it. Okay, so furthermore, alternatively, we can um, And do the following.
and we can go to two. All right, but then if we go to two, and then we still want to reach seven in three steps. So how do we continue? So notice that if we go to four, three, or five, then none of these three vertices is connected to seven by an inch. So which means that it's impossible to make three steps and reach seven. So which means that after two, we have to go back to one, and then, of course, we go to 7, so there is plus 1 step, and we reach vertex 7. This explains the distance. So, uh, let us maybe explain zeros on the diagonal. So, if I want to count the walks of length 3 from a vertex to itself, then um, well, a walk of length 3 from a vertex to itself would be a vertex, then we go to another vertex, then to a third vertex, and then back to this one. So this would be a triangle in our graph. But if you look at our graph, there is no triangle. So which means that the number of walks of length 3 from each vertex to itself here, in this case, is 0. And then finally, let's maybe count walks of length uh, 3, say, from 1 to 2. And so how many ways um, are there to um, go from 1 to 2 in three steps? So the first step... Uh, can be what can it be so we can go to seven but then from seven we have to go back to one and then we go to two so that's one or we can go straight to two but then there are four more ways to finish it right so we can from 2 we can go to 4 and back, from 2 we can go to 3 and back, from 2 we can go to 5 and back, and from 2 we can go to 1 and back. So all together, plus 4 more, we'll get 5 walks of length 3 from 1 to 2, and this explains this number. All right. Um, I hope um, it's going to become clearer now. Thank you very much.